Tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Ollie Aylan and for my master's research at the University of Otago in New Zealand, I was lucky enough to go to Brunei Dar es Salaam in Borneo to study the bat assemblage there. And when I arrived, I was given the opportunity to use an acoustic bat lure, which actually became a pretty major component of my thesis research. But why was I interested in them? What did I hope to achieve with my research? And first of all, what is an acoustic bat lure? Simplistically, bat lures are devices capable of playing high frequency sound, in this case, bat calls. The idea stems from research in the uh, 80s and 90s where researchers noticed that bats were attracted to the sound um, and first suggested that they could potentially be used to increase capture rates. Now this has been observed and applied in other taxa, uh, such as amphibians, birds and recently even fish communities. So why did I become so interested? Well, I love new tech and gadgets, and the idea of attracting bats to me seemed too good to be true. Um, but as with any new method, I consulted the literature, and I was surprised by the lack of documented studies on the use of these devices. Uh, there were actually only nine published studies on acoustic lures. Nearly all of the research was in Europe and North America, and the details on which calls to broadcast and how was fairly limited. Um, and after my first trip, um, I hadn't had much success either, um, and the results from the literature was fairly mixed. Um, so after the International Bat Conference um, and speaking to other researchers, I wanted to know more. This led to a global survey of Battler users. I asked 27 questions related to a user's location, what calls they used, uh, and more ethical and user experience questions. Um, I received 56 responses, which although quite low compared to many surveys, for a particularly niche um, device, I was fairly pleased. So what did I find out? Well, as expected, um, although I had respondents from 21 countries, three countries represented 50% of all respondents, being the UK, USA, and Belgium. Um, but people had used lures across 34 countries, but there was a bit more of an even spread across these areas, um, although most of it was in the UK, and generally it was in Europe. With a fairly broad range of devices available, the uh, Apodemus Battler, Binary Acoustics AT100, and the Sussex Autobat, which is one of the earliest devices designed in the UK by David Hill, were most used. When asked if there was any preference, there was no clear winner, although the ability to use standalone and the use of a tripod were noted. Also, and of particular note, 58% of respondents used the devices for survey work. Uh, just 10% were using them to actually test these devices, and a third of users were using to catch a particularly rare or elusive species. The practical setup of lures was done in a myriad of ways, um, from as the sort of as expected on a tripod next to the trap, uh, to in the trap, underneath the trap, on top of the trap, and even placed at a distance from traps. Now, lures have been used to catch a broad variety of species, but generally uh, Pipistrelle nathusi, Myotis bechsteini, and other Myotis species uh, were targeted most often. And a range of calls were used to catch them, uh, but generally it was these three same species calls that were used most. Although this doesn't necessarily mean it was the same species being caught that was being broadcast. And you can see from this plot the large range of calls that were used, uh, with 61% of respondents using a mixed combination of calls. You can also see the uh, type of calls and also the source of the calls. Although not always the same species calls used, 69% of users used a back call from the local region, the others being foreign calls. Social calls appear to be used most with 43% of users using these um, and just one person used a distress call. Calls were either direct recordings, 45%, synthesized calls, 29%, or both, 25%. Interestingly, Pipistrel and Athusi calls seem to work regardless of the target species or even the region, with reports of them working in India. Of slight concern, when asked if Yuzid had um, included broadcast call information in published studies, 75% said they had not. Also, uh, when asked if there were any ethical concerns with using lures, 54% thought there were, and 22% were unsure. Now these related to um, being concerned that they shouldn't be used near roosts, uh, that we don't have any standardized methods, distress calls shouldn't be used, um, and that we have a general lack of understanding surrounding these devices. 
In general though, 76% of users said they had a positive experience with using Lures and 81% would use one again. However, 23% of users said they did experience unexpected results. These were related to a male sex bias, only catching juveniles, only certain species are responsive, uh, but also that some species are only catchable with the use of a lure. So, what does all this mean? Well, over the last decade, these devices have become commercially available um, from between 600 to 2,000 US dollars, depending on the device. Sold on the premise, these devices increase capture rates of bats. Now, whilst this can be true, it is apparent that this may not always be the case. And with such variation in deployment methods, suggested and used broadcast calls, a lack of standardization or guidelines, and conflicting setup suggestions from manufacturers, using lures can be difficult to navigate. Now, although it's been suggested that some devices are better than others in certain scenarios, this is generally anecdotal, um, as there's no published comparison available yet. Um, and it really depends on the intended use and many other factors that change um, the effectiveness of these devices. For example, the background bat activity when you deploy these devices can change how it works, um, actually altering the perceived competition and food availability to the bats. It also depends on the target species, of course. Now, with many people using these devices for survey work, there is concern that this may not be appropriate, as we don't fully understand how these devices change the natural assemblage of bats over-representing some species and under-representing others. Generally, um, it's considered the best way to use these devices is for a particular um, rare or elusive species. Now, a lack of detail um, of broadcast calls in publications limits our understanding of what works and what didn't. And it's important we document these um, for future research. Also, the justification as to why some calls were used is limited and often it appears semi-random. Ethically, there are clearly concerns, and it's great to see that bat researchers are aware of these issues and trying to avoid certain scenarios. As these devices become more available, it's really important that we increase research and understand how they affect the target species and the local assemblage, um, and perhaps limit use until we really fully understand what's going on. Uh, to assist this, manufacturers could begin to collate user experiences on using these devices. Overall, it is clear there is a need for other international organisations to provide guidelines and standardised methods on how to use these devices. Not only will this ensure ethical use, but assist best practice, and also streamline research um, across the respective country or region. At present, the only organisations to provide such guidelines are the Bat Conservation Trust and Natural England, both based in the UK. Um, and this, these already address many of the concerns brought to light by this survey. Now this has been a relatively small snapshot of my thesis research, so I urge you to ask questions if you have any. I am intending to embark on a PhD which will hopefully include some more lure work, and I do have plans to test them further here in New Zealand. Sam Fries and I have also set up an online battlers forum, so I urge you to join that and the community of users so we can stimulate some discussions and share experience of using lures. Nami Hinui, Kia Koto Katoa.